stuff hiya. for us. Oh, oh, hi, Andy. I'm just looking for some stuff for our session. Oh, great. I love coming with the children as well. Dressing yeah. up. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I get to play dressing up. Might as well hot dog costume. Oh, great. Yeah. So I can wear that one today. No, we don't need no, that. No, okay. no, we don't need that. Oh, this is the wig you're wearing a few weeks ago, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good, isn't it? What do you reckon? this is good. What can we do with this? I don't know what we can do with that. There's some good goggles there. What else have we got? You get to do loads of fun stuff, don't you? I know. Banana costume. I don't know what that is. Oh, I think I've got... No, hang on. Hang on. That's not the kind of thing I'm looking... Oh, here it is. This is what we need today. A crown? A crown. What are we doing? National anthem or something? No, we've got Queen Victoria. Yes. This is the Queen Victoria, because you know what? And I'm going to use this as like a cloak, because they sometimes have that fur stuff, don't they, around their clothes. Do I look good? You look great. I do look good, because today we're talking about the second word, which is all about kingdom. So I thought I'd find some a crown and a costume that shows me as the queen, rather than the king, in my kingdom. And then I was going to well, go and decorate the... Let me just stop you there. Because it's actually a different type of kingdom. It's not kind of a kingdom like where there's, where there's a queen like that, like many of the kingdoms on our earth. Oh. We're going to watch a little video that helps us understand about God's kingdom or the kingdom of God. This is one of Jesus' favourite subjects that he spoke a lot about in the Bible. God's kingdom, the place where we see that God is in charge. Watch this clip and then hopefully you'll understand a bit more about God's kingdom. Brilliant, okay. God's story, kingdom. So part of God's story is about what Jesus called the kingdom. And it goes like this. When Jesus would teach people about God, he would tell them about God's kingdom. He would say God's kingdom is here or put God's kingdom first. That might be confusing to us today, especially if we live in a country that doesn't have a king. A kingdom is wherever the king is in charge. Kings can give commands and people in the kingdom obey those commands. So in God's kingdom, where God is in charge, people follow God's commands. And in the part of the Bible called the law, there are a lot of commands. It was kind of confusing. Even experts on the law would argue about which commands were more important than others. One day, some religious experts asked Jesus, teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law? Jesus said, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul. Love God with all your mind. Now that's what they expected Jesus to say. But then Jesus said, And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything that was written in the law and the prophets is based on these two commandments. Jesus was saying that if people choose to let God be in charge of their lives, then they'll show it by treating other people, their neighbors, with love. Because God loves everyone. People we know, like our family and friends, but also people we don't know, like strangers we've never even met. God even loves people who might seem like enemies. Jesus showed God's love by helping people. He healed people who were sick, and he spent time with people who other people didn't like. He even died to rescue everyone from all the times we've disobeyed God's laws. And he did it all to prove God's love. But God's kingdom didn't stop when Jesus died. Jesus came back to life and told his followers to spread God's kingdom throughout the entire world. And that's exactly what they did. See, Jesus had told them stories or parables to teach them about God's kingdom. Jesus said that the kingdom was like a tiny mustard seed that was planted in the ground and then grew and grew and grew until it became the biggest tree in the garden. And the birds that might have wanted to eat that tiny mustard seed could now build a nest in the mustard tree's branches. God's kingdom might seem really small at first, but it never stops growing. Jesus also said God's kingdom was like buried treasure that a man found in a field. Then when he realized how valuable the treasure was, he buried it again, sold everything he owned, and used the money to buy the whole field. Jesus was saying there's nothing more wonderful and good than to be in God's kingdom. The best news is God's kingdom isn't a place, like a field, or a building, or a country, that only certain people are allowed into. 
God's kingdom is wherever people love God and love other people. That means God's kingdom can be anywhere in the world and everyone can choose to be part of it. Wherever someone knows that every good thing they have comes from God, and so they share what they have with others, that can be God's kingdom. Wherever someone knows that God has forgiven them for messing up, and so they forgive someone else who's messed up too, that can be God's kingdom. Wherever someone learns about Jesus and tries to do the things that Jesus did, that can be God's kingdom too. And that's a little about God's kingdom. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Jesus talked about God's kingdom. The greatest commands are to love God and love people. Jesus showed what that looked like. The kingdom is like a mustard seed that grows into a tree. It's also like buried treasure. The kingdom is wherever people love God and love people. And that's a part of God's story. So I get it, Andy. It's, it's not actually about me being queen or you being king at all. God's kingdom talks about wherever people love God and love each other. That's God's kingdom here. That's God's kingdom. And we can see it here in part. But as we look around our world, we still see lots of pain. Yeah. We see people upset. Yeah. We see lots of examples of people not loving God and not loving each other. Yeah. So what, what can we do about it though? Well, here's three things we can do. The first thing we can do is we can pray. Jesus taught his followers, you might remember this bit in the Lord's Prayer, to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. And so we can pray that we would see evidence of God being in charge in our world more and more. More people loving God yeah. and loving each other. A fairer world where people are valued and looked after. So the first thing we can do, and we can be specific about the things we're asking, is to pray for God's kingdom to come. And I'm thinking the second thing we can do to be part of God's kingdom is act that way. Act that way that Jesus taught when he talked about in his parables and when he showed people how to live when he was here. So we can act that way. We can show in the things that we do that we love God. We can act in a way that shows that we love other people. And thirdly, we can... wait we can wait because although we only see god's kingdom in part jesus promised that one day we would see his kingdom in full and for those of us that believe in jesus one day we'll know god's kingdom in all its fullness when jesus comes again or if we die before and go and be with him forever we will know god's kingdom in all its fullness where god is fully in charge where there's nothing that's sad where there's nothing that's bad where everyone who's with God loves him and loves each other. So we can wait and Christians have hope because one day God's kingdom will fully come. Brilliant. So those three things to remember. We can pray, we can act and we can wait. And that helps us to understand this second word that we're looking at this week, the words of kingdom. <laughs>